Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. Hope you were doing well. In today's video, we are going to be discussing a liquidity crisis that is brewing in Europe as a result of the ongoing energy crisis there. And this crisis, it is the result of the fact that European energy producers are now facing $1.5 trillion in margin calls. And we're going to be getting into what those margin calls actually are and why, because of this liquidity crisis, there is a huge risk to the global economy, especially here in the West. And possibly this could represent an existential threat to the euro's existence as a currency. And I want to talk about why we are likely to see much, much higher inflation in Europe very soon as a result of this crisis. And speaking of inflation, if you would like a chance to get some real hard money that cannot be inflated away by the printing press, then check out the link down in the description to sdbullion.com slash smartstacker, where you can sign up for a chance to win a monster box of 500 US Silver Eagles from today's video sponsor, sdbullion.com. So what is going on in Europe? Why are these energy producers facing one and a half trillion dollars in margin calls? And you know, what is a margin call for an energy producer anyway? Well, a standard practice of these energy producers over in Europe is that they sell their production, their electricity, in advance on exchanges. And they do this so that they can lock in guaranteed pricing. It's a way to mitigate risk. But one side effect of this practice is that these companies, they have to provide security deposits to guarantee those future deliveries in case they default. And these deposits that they have to put up are known as margin calls. And when the price of energy surges, like it is now, these energy producers have to put up additional capital to secure these future sales. And it's a huge problem right now. I mean, Norwegian energy giant Equinor, they warned that the energy companies in Europe are struggling with $1.5 trillion of these margin calls. And Helge Hogane, that's the senior vice president for gas and power at Equinor, recently told Bloomberg in an interview, liquidity support is going to be needed. This is just capital that is dead and tied up in margin calls. If the companies need to put up that much money, that means liquidity in the market dries up, and this is not good for this part of the gas market. And then also added that the $1.5 trillion estimate for these margin calls is actually a conservative estimate. And this is the real risk here. The risk is liquidity. If these companies are forced to keep putting up huge amounts of capital, to secure these future energy deliveries, they may run out of cash. They may not have enough capital to make these margin calls. And here's the thing, because of the supply, there's also a real risk that these future deliveries might not be made. And that's the reason that we're seeing the margin calls soar in price. But just like that senior VP for gas and power said, liquidity support is going to be needed. And it looks like the way that the Europeans are going to resolve this crisis will be some sort of government intervention. You know, surprise, surprise, big shock. Uh, and here's the thing, you can always provide liquidity when you have a fiat currency. Alan Greenspan mentioned this over a decade ago in congressional testimony. You know, he was talking about the possibility of default on something like Social Security and Medicare. And he made the point that you know, when you have the printing press, you can always guarantee payments. It's just that you can't guarantee the purchasing power of those payments. So liquidity might be provided, but it could be at the expense of the purchasing power of the currency. And that's the same situation that we're facing here in Europe today, because liquidity can always be provided. It's just that, you know, the governments that are going to provide it, they're already bankrupt. You know, they're huge debtors. They don't have huge cash reserves to distribute to these companies. So they're just going to have to borrow the money into existence and then distribute as much as they need to fix the liquidity issues. But of course, that doesn't really fix the problem because printing up a bunch of fiat currency and giving it to energy producers it doesn't fix the underlying supply issue, you know, and it might keep these companies from going bankrupt in the short term, but it's also going to exacerbate the problem at the end of the day because it is going to make the inflation problem the Europeans are dealing with that much worse. And it's gonna put even more upward pressure on the price of everything. Also, it seems like there's not a lot of consensus among EU nations at the moment about how exactly this intervention should be coordinated and handled You've got Germany, they're taking things into their own hands. And they've set aside billions of euros already to bail out their energy giant, Uniper. Austria, who's also very dependent on Russian gas, has extended a 2 billion euro credit line to its municipal utility companies. 
And Finland and Sweden, they've announced a $33 billion emergency liquidity facility of loans and credit guarantees to its energy sector. So basically, they're just allocating this capital, ready to loan it out at a moment's notice. But other places like France and Italy, they're not very happy with this. And they have been warning that unilateral interventions by individual EU nations could lead to a fragmentation of the EU. Now, of course, Germany, they're one of the most dependent countries in the EU on Russian gas. So they have the most incentive to want to intervene as the crisis is going to be worse there at first. But the bottom line here is this energy crisis, you know, it's not going to resolve itself anytime soon. This is going to be something that we have to deal with far into the future. The Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 pipelines are gone. They're blown up and they're probably not likely to get repaired anytime in the future, or maybe not ever. And the liquid natural gas tankers that are delivering gas to Europe now and the new gas deals they're trying to sign with other regional partners, you know, they just can't plug the holes fast enough because the infrastructure isn't there. And even if we can get gas and energy to Europe, it's going to be at a much higher price than they're accustomed to with the cheap Russian gas coming in through these pipelines. And at the same time, there's also other exacerbating factors like OPEC. They just cut their oil production by 2 million barrels a day. And that is going to drive global energy prices even higher and make this crisis even worse. And on top of that, there's still more sanctions against Russia that are set to go into effect that aren't even in place yet. So, you know, that's going to make this crisis worse. They've got the insurance ban that they're planning to implement at the end of this year. And it's going to be really interesting to me to see if they're even able to actually put that into place, because that might make this whole crisis, you know, 10 times worse. But before all is said and done, it is very likely that there is going to be some kind of coordinated massive government intervention to bail out these energy companies in Europe. And that is going to lead to much, much higher inflation. And possibly, this could lead to the end of the EU as an experiment if these countries can't get aligned with how they want to respond to this. And that could even mean the end of the euro as a currency, which, of course, is going to be disastrous for the global financial system. And this is likely to play out in a very negative way for the global economy, especially here in the West. You know, we're sort of in a position where we're damned if we do and damned if we don't. Because on the one hand... If the liquidity crisis that these companies are experiencing goes unaddressed, you're looking at a potential financial meltdown. Uh, there's a financial NGO, it's called Finance Watch, and they recently released a report about the 60 largest banks in the world and their exposure to fossil fuels. And it comes out to about $1.35 trillion. And the 22 European banks in the report, they have about $239 billion worth of credit financing for fossil fuel activities. So you know, it's not an inconsequential number. It's a lot of money. And you can see why if these energy companies in Europe are forced to default or they fail because they can't meet these liquidity requirements, then that could lead to a cascading failure in the financial system as well. So, of course, you know, governments and central banks, they're always going to choose inflation over a financial crisis. And that's why the European energy sector is likely to get even more bailouts moving forward, and that it is going to lead to massively higher inflation and ultimately some very negative consequences for the global economy in the euro. And look, if the euro does fail, you know, the shockwaves from that, it might not be long before the dollar follows it. I'm just saying uh, that is in the cards, you know, a gigantic currency like the euro going down or being hyperinflated or failing. I mean, it's going to be absolutely disastrous if that happens. So for me, you know, the takeaway from all of this is that we all really need to be getting prepared as much as possible. We need to be getting out of paper assets and into real, physical, tangible assets like gold and silver, assets that cannot be inflated away to nothingness by the printing press. And also, you know, on a personal level, we probably need to be planning on how to deal with much higher energy prices in the future, whether that means, you know, riding your bike more or getting some solar panels or getting a more fuel efficient vehicle. And also, you know, most importantly, I would say just enjoy the good times now, folks, because you got to make hay while the sun is shining and it looks like things may be getting very dark very soon for the global economy. So let me know what you think about this developing energy crisis, these margin calls that these European energy producers are facing. How do you think this is going to play out? Please leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think and stay safe, everybody. Happy stacking. I'll catch you next time. Smart Silver Stacker, out.